What's up YouTube? Konzilla here. This is day 9 of 31 Days of Horror, where I'm reviewing a different horror movie for every day of the month of October. Tonight's film is the 1984 classic Nightmare on Elm Street, directed by Wes Craven. This movie stars Heather, Heather Lanchenkamp as Nancy, and is the feature film debut of legendary actor Jonathan Depp. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is obviously a classic of the slasher genre. This is a film a lot of people are already familiar with. Um, I've seen it a number of times before, but felt like I was pretty due for another viewing, so I decided to add it to this year's list. Um, quick plot re recap here with spoilers. Um, film opens with the character of Tina, who is in the midst of a nightmare where she is being stalked by Freddy Krueger. Uh, through the boiler room setting. Um, this gives us a nice introduction to the uh, now iconic uh, horror character. Um, and uh, obviously she she survives that first nightmare. Um, we get kind of an introduction to her group of friends, which is Nancy, uh, Glenn, who's played by John Depp, and then Rod. Um, and she's real shook up about this dream, so she asks her friends to come over and uh, stay the night with her so she doesn't have to sleep alone. Obviously, they, they all have to lie to their parents to get this little shindig together. Anyways, her boyfriend Rod winds up coming over as well, and uh, naturally, since this is a horror movie, they wind up having sex. And then after she falls asleep, she's having a nightmare. This is kind of the first really cool dream sequence. We have uh, Freddy stalking her through the streets. There's a great shot where his arms are, you know, super extended all the way out, and uh, he's scraping his uh, finger knives along the, the fence or whatever, making that terrible screeching sound. And, uh, you know, then he's cutting his own fingers off, just taunting her. And uh, then we get to the uh, scene where she is actually, you know, brutally murdered uh, while she's still asleep, and her boyfriend Rod is watching in horror. Uh, basically, from his perspective, you know, it's just her getting dragged up the walls of, of her room, covered in blood, you know, she's been slashed by Freddy's uh, knife glove down the, down the chest and uh, is bleeding everywhere. Uh, anyways, the police believe that he is the one who murdered her, so he gets arrested, and uh, we, uh, we find out that Nancy is having dreams of the same guy uh, uh, that she's been seeing, that uh, Tina had been seeing in her dreams. Um, and, uh, so, then, yeah, after that, Nancy starts having, you know, she's at school and she has a vision of, uh, she has a dream about seeing Tina's dead body in a body bag and getting dragged through the halls, which she totally freaks out about, and then her mom winds up taking her to, like, a dream, a sleep clinic to try and figure out what's going on where she's uh, in the midst of a nightmare and able to bring back Freddy's hat with her. And so it's becoming clear to her, you know, that everything she's seeing in her dreams is, is real and uh, that they're in a serious danger. Um, anyways, she goes about trying to figure out how to stop Freddy Krueger. And uh, along the way, of course, we find out his backstory. Nancy's uh, mom, who's an alcoholic, uh, winds up telling her that, you know, he was a... a, a child murderer who was arrested. He'd killed about 20 different kids in the neighborhood, she says, and uh, he gets off on a technicality, so the parents of the neighborhood decide to band together and uh, they basically execute him. And uh, so that's how it, he comes to inhabit the dreams of uh, these teenagers, because they're basically the children of all the, of the parents who, who murdered him. Um, and then, uh, so, uh, I don't know if I already covered it, but Rod winds up getting, you know, hung in his jail cell by his sheets, making it look like a suicide. And then, uh, later on, Jonathan Depp's character winds up, you know, after Nancy kind of puts this plan together of how they're going to catch Freddy, uh, he falls asleep, of course, like a total dork. And, uh, he gets pulled through the bed, uh, brutally murdered by Freddy, and then... Uh, she's in, in her dream world trying to catch him so she can bring him back out into the real world so her, her cop dad can arrest him, you know. Um, and she booby traps the whole house. Uh, there's a great scene where she's reading a book called uh, 
what is it, Improvised Booby Traps and, and Anti-Personnel Devices, which is a great title for a book. Um, anyways, she's successful. She is able to, you know, stop Freddy Krueger, or at least she thinks. She's able to bring him out of her dream. Uh, but he winds up, uh, she, she sets him on fire again, of course, but, and then when her, the cops come over to her place, uh, he manages to run upstairs to her mom's room and, uh, pull her under, through the bed to her death, and she's, you know, burned alive. Um, but then Nancy, you know, realizes that the only way to stop Freddy Krueger is to take, take the power back by not believing in his ability to harm them. And then we find out that it was all just a dream. Uh, you know, happy ending. Her friends are still alive, her mom's still alive, and she's head headed off to school with her friends. You know, John Depp's character picks her up in his convertible, uh, and they're driving off to school. But of course, top comes down on the convertible, and it's red and white striped like Freddy's uh, sweatshirt, and they realize that, you know, they're in another dream. She realizes she's in another dream, and uh, as they're driving away, we see her mother get pulled through the window of their door by Freddy's claw hand. And uh, that is the end of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, as I understand, that's not the way Wes Craven originally wanted to end it. That was kind of the studio stepping in and saying, let's get ready to make a sequel here. Um, but it's a nice nice bleak ending to the film that leaves you kind of scratching your head, uh, not want, not really knowing what was real. So I, I, don't, I don't hate the ending. Um, yeah, obviously, total horror classic here. Um, Freddy Krueger is a super well-known uh, uh, horror villain. Um, really great film. Wes Craven is, is a great director. He brings a certain uh, gravitas to this film that makes the material all feel very uh, serious and uh, foreboding throughout the whole film. It feels very, very grounded compared to the later films where... They, they, things get a bit more campy, the dream sequences get a bit more out there, um, the uh, Robert Englund's performance as, as Freddy throughout the franchise as it goes on gets much more campy, much more, you know, full of one-liners and all of that. He still has that sort of sadistic humor in this one, but it's like Freddy's the only one laughing, you know, it's, it's to taunt these kids, it's not, not a wink at the audience the way it kind of feels in later films. So this one definitely has a, strikes a pretty different tone compared to the rest of the franchise. Um, and that's what makes, makes this one such a classic. And it's a super interesting idea for a movie, obviously. Um, Wes Craven was really onto something with this one. Um, Effects-wise, there's a lot of really great uh, special effects that happen in this movie. My favorite sequence is Tina's death scene, um, which they achieved with a, a rotating set. They built a set of her room. Uh, Basically, the camera stayed still as I understand it, and then the room kind of spins around it, and uh, that's how they create the effect of, you know, her looking like she's getting dragged up the walls um, of her room. And, you know, the, the scene where we see her get, you know, sliced open is still really, it's a super quick little cut, but it's really jarring. It, it really hits you every time you see that. Um, super, super effective scene there. It's really, really intense. Um, like I said, the scene with Freddy's arms extended out, you know, it's a simple effect, but it really gives this sort of dreamlike uh, visual to the film that, that it needs. Um, the scene of her being dragged through the halls in the body bag, and there's leaves blowing, and, you know, the, the hall monitor girl is dressed up like Freddy and has his glove, you know. That's a, a really great sequence. Um, there's a scene where... Nancy is running up the stairs of her house, and it's with each time, you know, with each footfall, it's like the uh, the stairs just turn to mush, which they achieved by putting pancake mix in the stairs. That's a really effective, you know, visual right there. If you've ever had a dream where you were running away and it was like you couldn't couldn't move your body fast enough, I think that's something that's really relatable. Um, and then obviously, the the death scene for Jonathan Depp's character. Uh, where it, he gets sucked into the bed, and then it's just a fountain of blood coming out, which again was achieved with the, uh, the rotating set. I believe they reused it for this scene. Obviously just turn the set upside down and, and have the blood all draining out all over the place. Just a crazy, you know, he just gets turned into a fountain of blood. It's great. Um, and then there's the, uh, the sequence where 
Freddy gets lit on fire for, you know, a second time by Nancy, and he falls down the stairs. They, they really did that. There's a stuntman in there who really got set on fire, and if you watch it, you can tell that he's, you know, wearing the really thick, like, fire retardant material or whatever. He's obviously one thick Freddy in that scene. Um, but it's impressive to know that there's really a dude on fire <laughs> falling down those stairs. That that's, can't be an easy job. Um, so definitely just an awesome looking film, awesome ideas going on, really well directed by Wes Craven, and uh, the soundtrack is really good as well. It's a really gothic, uh, electronic synth driven score. Um, Freddy's sort of motif that repeats throughout the film uh, is really ear catching, really haunting. It's got a nice dark gothic vibe to it. Um, in the upbeat horror scenes, you know, there's the sort of driving synth bass arpeggiators happening, and those are um, really effective as well. It really gives that sort of urgent feel to the film. Um, so the overall presentation here is, is really well done. Um, I'd say the actors all do a pretty good job in this. Um, everybody's pretty believable, and there's just a really kind of serious tone all throughout the film, for the most part. Um, that just really, really makes the film work. Um, so yeah, this is definitely one of those movies that if you're a horror fan, you should you should see this if you haven't already. Um, if you have seen this film, definitely let me know your, co your, your opinion in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to see more content like this in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be covering a different horror movie every day for the rest of the month. I've still got a lot of great films to review coming up. Uh, so you'll definitely want to check that out. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.